Good evening, friends. It's great to see you. <coughs> Welcome to the annual Sorley Maclean Lecture. This is, this is going to be following uh, a series of um, a, a, there was a series under Duncan Ferguson a number of years ago of uh, lectures, and some of those people who uh, delivered them are here tonight. Uh, welcome. <coughs> this, uh, this new um, series was established to remember Sorley, an extraordinary fellow, a noble fellow, a great poet, a great friend to Sulmore and a great scholar who put a lot, who added a lot to the uh, literature and history of the Highlands of Scotland. In establishing this new series, it is, uh, uh, we intend that there will be uh, a scholarly lecture each year through the medium of Gaelic. This will give us the opportunity to add to the status of Gaelic scholarship in things like uh, literature, history and culture. And recognition will be given to great uh, scholarship through this as well. Following Sorley's example, we hope to have uh, scholarly views from the inside. I'd like to thank uh, the Sorley Trust and to Sorley's family for their great encouragement and uh, support. We'd also like to record our thanks to Abigail Burniat, who is um, the head of research here at Sulmore, and who conceived this idea in the first place. Together, we have a technical team tonight who will be helping us uh, casting this live and so that it will be available afterwards as well. And the teams here at the college have been really busy for tonight. Uh, I'll be here doing translation. Ferguson, that's me. And so everybody who's been helping, thank you all. <coughs> Thank you the, to the audience here, everybody online as well who have joined us. <coughs> Lastly, we are very uh, thankful uh, to our great scholar and speaker tonight, <coughs> Professor Donald Meek. Thank, uh, we're thankful for his uh, willingness to launch this new series. I would like to welcome, welcome Dr. Donald William Stewart uh, to come up here first of all and to say a few words about Donald. Thank you, Gillian. Uh, Thank you, Gillian. Thank you for your kind words. If there's, I need to. Uh, if anybody's, uh, if there's any emergencies, the toilets are down the sto stairs. <laughs> We've had a lot of uh, moor fires in Sky. You may have seen in the news. If you do hear an alarm, there probably will be a fire, <laughs> and it may be a bad. <laughs> We'll have to be out with the shovels, uh, putting out the, the heather. Please turn off your phones too. Gosh, I better do that myself. Better out off without phones. That's what I tell my kids anyway. Uh, the the um, scholarship of Sol McLean is deeply rooted in his Highland community. He very judiciously wrote about what he heard within the heritage. 
there were so many Gaelic voices that had been allowed to go into obscurity in uh, universities. He gave us a very true picture of life here. Uh, he also spoke about the ill will against Gales in his scholarship. He did some great, um, showed us some great new um, perspectives on uh, the Highlanders, the effects of the economy and various other impacts upon them. James uh, Hunter said that this was probably one of the first efforts in this vein in Scotland, and it, it was done by a Gaelic poet. And we will be adding to that tonight with a, 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 an ex excellent Gaelic scholar. It's our duty to follow in Sorley's um, footsteps in terms of research and writing about the history and the culture of the Gaels from within that heritage and culture. That is why we've established this series of uh, lectures. And again, thanks to the McLean, Sorry, McLean Trust and uh, the Sorley McLean family. It's a great pleasure uh, to say a few words about our first speaker. Professor Donald Meek, we couldn't have a more appropriate or better um, speaker, tidy man to his boots, but who also has uh, connections with Sky uh, through his mum in Strolimus and Uig and in Achnacloich here in Slate. He, his scholarship from the Middle Ages uh, and a religious poetry of the 19th century and many, many, many others. He has won great renown in the uh, academic circles, um, various accolades from Aberdeen, Cambridge, Glasgow, but this um, heritage is. And on the screen now you should see some, uh, some of the recurring themes. When I was a book called Fact or Fiction, I may well yet. I think I might need another lifetime to do it, though. <laughs> You'll have to pray for me. There was a very able lady, Kathleen Macaulay. She, she made these kind of um, tables that would show clearly the, the subjects where were the where where this where they were uh, recorded? Those who were gathering the tales for the School of Scottish Studies, and you can see <laughs> the bad factor. The factor does bad things, you, and you can see the, the horrible things they were did. He continues. There's no end to what a bad factor can do. When you, there's a great breadth of things in, to, from the north of Scotland to the south and to the islands, Tyree, where I am myself, there's a great wealth of stories about the bailiffs. Morlanoch, uh, first label, labour in Tyree. Bad things happen to factor. Bad things happen to factor. Some bad things happen to the factor in as a sort of uh, a parable of what he was doing himself. You'll see that in some of the tales I've chosen. Murder tale, raining porridge. We're going to come to that later. It's an exciting one. You can kill a factor with porridge. <laughs> Going on. There's no shortage of these tales. Occasionally, the factors do nice things. Who would have thought? And there can be balance like that. 
no uh, it depended on whether you were uh, defying the goodwill of the factor or the bad will of the factor. There we go. There's more and more and more. There's some songs and tales as well. We'll, we'll be looking at those later. Uh, a little peek at some of these. A lot of them from Tyree, as you can see. I was very much aware of that as growing up. The amount of tales about the, the, the bailiffs and the factors. Tales, then. We'll start with uh, uh, tales from the, the uh, oral tradition. These obviously appeared where the bailiffs and the factors were using um, very heavy-handed tactics or where they, the people thought they were being badly treated. Very few that weren't. You'll see that uh, spread um, in the School of Scottish Studies. They, some go from district to district and, and from language to language indeed. Some are in Gaelic and in Scots. Here's a story then. This was recorded in Barra. And it's, but it's found in different places, in Gaelic and in English. If you go to the Kista Riches, Topper and Dulchish, you'll meet it in English. Not quite the same, but a similar one by Jeannie Robertson and Stanley Robertson. This is, it's nice that you can go between the different heritages. The, the motifs are continuous from one to the other uh, in the stories as well. When I taught a, a, a foundational Gaelic class in Edinburgh, some of you here will remember this. I would read this story, The Night That It Rained Porridge, with the class. I always enjoyed it. It, it always made me chuckle. I hope you'll get a wee laugh out of yourselves. The night that it rained porridge. I can, I'll read it in English as best I can. There was a lady, an old lady once, one of the islands. She was behind with the rent and she was afraid. If the factor came, he would uh, chuck her out of the house. She had a son as well. Um, he wasn't quite right in the head. Anyway, she got a word that the factor was coming to get the rent on this particular night and she thought of a trick. She had a gun and she gave it to the boy and said, out you go and when you see the factor, shoot him dead. When the boy went out, the, uh, the, the, the old lady made a pot of porridge. She went out, she climbed a tree, sat on a branch and she started to spray the porridge everywhere. While it was spraying around and the boy was getting covered in porridge, who came but the bailiff, the, 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 uh, the factor? Picked up the, he raised the gun to his uh, shoulder killed, and killed the factor. The old lady uh, hid, but then on the way home, she... Uh, exhumed the factor and put um, a sheep in its place. And the boy told his mum what had happened. I did it, yes, but it was a crazy night because it was raining porridge. Um, anyway, people came looking for the factor, wondering what had happened to him. They came to the old lady's house and they said, do you know what happened to the, to the factor? And the boy said, I shot him dead. I killed him when, the, uh, when it was raining porridge. This made them wonder. And then he went off with the boys and he showed them where he'd buried the factor. And they, they, they dug up the, the grave 
But of course they didn't get the factor, they got a sheep's uh, carcass. Oh no, this poor guy's off his head. He didn't kill the factor at all, obviously. And then the, the factor or anybody else uh, no, the fact didn't bother the lady or the boy ever again. This uh, shows us the kind of um, st stories we get. It is a bit of a cartoonish picture. It's funny, it's lively, and there are, th there are three main um, elements that appear. The rent bothers the woman, she wants to kill the factor, and there's a hero in the story that uh, brings things to fruition and kills the factor. Obviously, such a thing never happened in the Highlands, thankfully. <laughs> it's called a jacktail. There's a wee a boy like Jack and the Beanstalk that, 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 that kills the, uh, the enemy and changes his situation. We get that often in the stories. Yes, so we get this where the factor is upstaged or um, got the better off by a, a, a young boy. This is also in the, uh, the law of the factor. This story was written out beautifully, as you can see it, by Donald MacDonald um, in, in South Uist, as you can see on the screen just now. He was very good. They had great Gaelic and Penyanur in, in South Uist. This is, this is in um, the School of Scottish Studies. School of Scottish Studies archives. Three were in Hook, Dawian, and Skilock Shaw were Royal MacIntyre and the Moon Ronald MacIntyre in the same town. Um, and this was preserved. Uh, it's called the Factor's Law. Here's, here's a little summary, which I'll read as best I can. Even though this was recorded in Uist, it belongs to Sky. It was McKinnon of Strath here, is to blame, according to a, uh, a Skyman. And you'll also get that in uh, the School of Scottish Studies. In the Stubberandulchish, sorry. I can't tell you how precious Toparadulchus is, the Kistler Riches. It's one of the most amazing things that happened in my life, that you can go back tonight and you can listen to these as, as they were um, spoken. This is how uh, it was written. Very easy to follow. When uh, factors were in power in the Highlands, they made laws for themselves on many occasions, laws which the landlords knew nothing about. In Sky at that time, the ha factors had it as a law that uh, if anyone died, the factor would come and he would take away the best horse that he had in the stable. Now, it was always the horse in the corner beside the doorpost that would be taken. As it tended to be that the best one would be tied uh, in the corner at the doorpost. On that occasion, anyway, in Sky, uh, a man died in the area, and as usual, the factor came to claim this doorpost horse. The only people in the house were the widow of the deceased and a little boy about four years old, and they only had the one horse. The factor said that he was taking away the horse. The woman began to complain, but uh, that did no good. The horse would have to go. So what she did was, she took hold of the little fellow and she hit him 
and she, she hurt him until he was lying on the floor crying. Uh, Ill treatment that he had never uh, received before. Off you go now, she said, and you will never forget the day the factor took away the horse. It so happened that a man died in the district in which the boy and his mother lived, and at that time the boy was about 19 years old. The factor came the next day to claim the doorpost horse, and when the lad saw him coming, he himself went over to the house. He asked the factor to leave the horse, but he would not, uh, and the boy took hold of the factor. I remember the day you took away my father's horse and the hammering I received, and so you're going to get exactly the same and far more than I got. He set, he set about the factor, kicked him and gave him a good doing, and when he was half dead, he cut off his head with a knife and he went to the landlord's house. The landlord came downstairs. When he saw the sight in front of him, he didn't know what to say. The boy then told him exactly what happened um, with, with the uh, doorpost horse. I had no idea that my factors had that practice, but it won't happen anymore. But uh, off you go and bury the head with the rest of the body, please. The boy went off, he buried the head and the body of the factor, and from that day to this one, uh, no one has heard any more about the factor's doorpost horse. So there you go, that's what happened in Sky. There's always, there's always something awful happening to the, to the factor. Here's another wee story uh, from Tyree. This is that's the Duke Tyree Duke, the Duke House. We we didn't like it as a place. It wasn't the most pleasant. People would go there to pay rent and things. Not the happiest place. A wee story from Tyree called the, the, the House of the Cursed Island, it's called. It's different from the, the, the porridge story. The three elements that I mentioned before are here. There's the Chamberlain, the bailiff. Um, he's very heavy on one crofter and the crofter wants to kill him and the crofter uses another power by cursing the chamberlain and the house that he builds. This is the story. When the, when the house was being built, there was a... He, the chamberlain gave an order to the crofters to help with the work of building the house and the, uh, and the causeway. There was a guy, a crofter, working for long hours, and when the day's work was done, the chamberlain kept him going. He knew that if he refused, he would be cleared from his house without delay. And so he laboured on, but he said to MacLauren, you won't spend a single night in the house, the island house. And that is it, what happened. Just when it was about to be completed, he became ill. Um, he was, in, in order to contravent the, the, the curse, he was ordered to be taken in a, 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 in a blanket to the house, but he died before he got over the threshold. This is not true history. It wasn't the Chamberlain uh, MacLaurin. He didn't build this house. This, build, this was built in uh, 1748, when there was a different bailiff there. He didn't come, Callum didn't come until 1801. So uh, MacLaurin couldn't have been part of this story about the Island House. 
He was stayed. He stayed in it. But he didn't build it. In the first uh, version, um, and there are different versions, the, the bailiff isn't named at all. It's pretty much as is, but that the, the, the bailiff is, the, is not named. Just Mbali, the bailiff, the factor. So perhaps a storyteller put the name in to give it more weight, uh, more weight in his mind anyway, by aiming at somebody who had existed, it made the story stronger. Um, they're not detailed in that way, usually. But, of course, a storyteller can add the name if he wishes. That's how, th that's how this works. Bad factors. But as, as we saw, the lovely tables that Kathleen made for me, they were also uh, good factors. And some of these stories are just as good as the, uh, the nasty ones. I got one from the mainland. The Red Captain of Glen Lyon. This appeared in the Celtic Monthly, as you can see just now. It's they were showed in a bad light. They might also be shown in, in a very positive light. And this is it. This is one example. Red Captain of Glen Lyon. Uh, when this famous Campbell was factor to the third Earl of Bredalban on the estate of Lord Lorne and Argyll, uh, there were two brothers who owned a small holding of land, each one having half. Um, one of them had a large young family and he was so greatly uh, overwrought by rearing them that he couldn't maintain his share in the way he ought. So that wasn't the case with the other brother. He was a wealthy man and was considered well off by the people in the area. He took the opportunity to go to the Red Captain and he complained to him about his brother that he was that he was allowing his part of the holding to, to fall apart with no fertilising, no tilling and no work. And after many... Uh, by your leave, Captain, he said, you cannot do, you couldn't do better than actually giving my brother, uh, my brother's half to me. And in order to reinforce his bid, he put ten pounds sterling on the table in an attempt to tempt the captain. The gentleman answered him uh, quite dryly, you will get your brother's half. The deceiver went off uh, full of himself. Soon after this, the poor brother, who was in difficulties, heard heard a rumour about what had happened. Uh, he went, very sadly, and uh, to the captain. He, he related what he had heard, but he hoped that, although his part of the holding was not in the order that it ought to be, uh, that maybe when his family grew up, uh, things would get better. What you heard is true enough, said the captain. Your brother got your half. When the poor man was going away, sadly, the gentleman called him back, saying, although he got your half, he didn't ask for his own half. <laughs> you go back, and when uh, Whitson comes, I will put you in possession of your brother's portion. And, poor fellow, here you go, here's ten pounds sterling for you, which will help you to rear your family, and with which your brother tried to bribe me. Great wee story there. Just see it. Just a wee taste of, a small taste of these stories. That's amazing, uh, researching them, and see how these motifs that I've mentioned, how they uh, carry from one story to another. Now, to the songs. 
When we look at the songs, about the factors, they're different from the stories. I think, I hope you saw with the stories that there's, the, the stories are quite broad, uh, general. They don't name the factors generally, but in the songs, the people are, the, 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 the malfact, the, the, uh, um, the bad folk are named. Uh, they're often disparaging them, mocking them, um, criticizing them. And we've got a lot of examples, uh, quite a lot. There are, there are lots of stories. We can, we can actually spend a week, <laughs> every day and night, looking at the other um, examples. I'm just going to keep to these uh, ones tonight. Here's one. Patrick Seller there. His parody on Patrick Seller. A satire, I should say. A very dark figure in the history of uh, the Highlands. When I prepared Tuas Chirna, the book, I edited this song for the first time. Um, Sheila Kidd in Glasgow University has done another uh, edition that's uh, stay, stay, uh, uh, using an earlier text than I did. And there are other um, verses that have appeared. It's very uh, it's precious to see these and to see the different versions. This is Seller. This is him getting the, the stuffing kicked out of him. I think this song was done. I think this was after he was freed in Inverness. Um, and uh, in 1816, and, and he death by uh, a murder was he was accused of murder. This this wasn't uh, this song was, a, was a, an answer to that. Um, oh, the black rogue! He the black rogue. I saw a dream. And I would not mind seeing it again. If I were to see it while awake, it would make me merry all day. A big fire was ready, and Roy was right in its middle. Young was incarcerated, and there was iron about Seller's bones. Seller is in Kilmali, left there like a wolf, catching and oppressing everything that comes within his range. His noose is like and this is a good bit. His nose is like an iron ploughshare or the tooth of the long beaked porpoise. The, the poet had seen the nose. He has a grey head like a seal and his lower abdomen resembles that of a male ass. His long neck is like that of a crane and his face has no appearance of gentleness. His long, sharp-shinned legs resemble ropes of sea tangle. What a pity that you were not in prison for years, existing on bread and water with a hard shackle of iron, strong and immovable about your thigh. If I could get at you on an open field with people, trying you down, with people tying you down, I would pull with my fists three inches of flesh out of your lungs. this song went over to Canada with people who were cleared. And that's where it was preserved. 
except uh, one um, version that was in the Oban Times, and that's the one that Sheila Kidd is um, researching. Over in Nova Scotia, there were, there were ladies who lived in a house, and they were very fond of this song. They, their people were cleared, so you can imagine why they liked this song. And when they sang the song, they would dance. They would be hitting the rafters with, with, uh, with joy when they were singing this song. That's how uh, real it was in their minds. The, these songs lasted uh, in folklore. Uh, the way in which they were uh, sung and preserved. They felt that there was some kind of justice to have these songs, that these songs in themselves represented some kind of justice in terms of psychology uh, that is behind a lot of this uh, folklore. It gives some kind of relief to people and encouragement and gives them, gives them uh, a chance to kind of find closure. Um, out of sky. Everybody will be familiar with this hero, heroine, I should say, Mary Vore, Mary McPherson. I remember the first time I came across the song that I'm going to do. This is the elegy song on Sheriff Ivory. This was. This was. Well, this was uh, printed in 1887, but it wasn't in her book. Afterwards, when I thought about it, this may, may not be one of the safest book uh, songs to put in a book. I was starting to get a picture of a Sheriff Ivory. It's like there, there's no pictures. I uh, haven't seen a picture of them, but there's a picture in this um, song. I'm going to read a little bit of it to give you a flavour of it. Um, she used her imagination here. There was awful things happening at the time here. Um, I heard that even, a, that even a child was taken in sky and, and the, the, had, uh, a sum had to be paid to free the kid. Um, and they would blame Ivory, who was running things. He, he was the one who should pay for it. So this uh, elegy song for Ivory, this is one of the most powerful and creative songs that Mari ever actually created. It, it, this is the broadside here. This, this had a life of its own, printed on its own on a big sheet. Uh, which is uh, we call a broadsheet or a broadside. Nurevachirnes <laughs> I heard a story on a very happy note, and were it not true, it would be hard, hard blow that the mean coward had been stuffed in a hole without a board or a rag fixed round him. Blessed be the hand that tightened the knot, pressing down the hard, surly head. It put the bald-pated coward in a scanty, narrow cage, and no official or officer will free him. Every old woman would hasten with a light step and children would go in a rapturous race to pull you from the mud with a straw rope around your body to be dragged away on beer poles. <laughs> and so it goes on. 
So lach we came, kach kalich na dem, s klam wicken an reish lugerach, got a hlut a paul a suk an mut haum. Pretty brutal stuff. You see tarin an lon fortune. Scooper great, a humber for clay, pish turn look cheat, boy a lock. Heater towns are gach blar, clincher founder gach harsh, and run gelter na rap ruker noch. Say Germasir, Hanak as a grief, a hashiktik do lia outrishen. Sen avok and her clowns and brahans and night, gusna scrapish and rain, erpacher. Grumas gach druip as malok na tour. Reich ruhig wub an dol korkchal, man a greep a wich hör von a smitjepoch kön, an tschernachud, over skornanich. Kudder likinj quach wassos de hin, an noch gesgach prieb goverstach, smad a dischio gach kluers an pickant de spur, tut mer iudas, gut grund, fotosach. The meter is very tidy. Excellent. The way that that was sounded, which I'm sure you can hear. It's a strophic, or like a rowing song. It's almost like a rowing song or a walking song. The, the, the beat is so... Powerful. In Tyree, we were, uh, had a hard time ourselves. There was a particular fellow who was very well known. The, the black factor, or the big factor. There's the boy there. I heard him as the black factor the, uh, uh, in Ky the Kyle where I was from. In the other end of the island, he was known as the big factor, or the, fa uh, the big factor. He had a terrible reputation. That's what I heard about the black factor uh, initially. He belonged to, uh, they called him Ian Naharshtimoda, or, or Long John. He's a big fella. He, he had a farm in um, the Ross of Mull. Uh, they called him the big factor in Mull. He, he got a reputation in Mull and Tyree at the time of the potato famine. Um, the, uh, during the time of the clearances in, in Tyree. His um, factor at the time uh, was Angus Machcrian. He was from Isla as well. Sorry, for, yeah. And the, the, Ross, the people from Ross of Mull were that he is giving land to his friend from Isla, uh, to his relatives in Isla. I remember when I was uh, gathering years ago, listening to John Campbell uh, uh, doing, I remember a fellow reciting this verse. This was um, about Johnny Campbell, big Angus Macrian, the terrible skinner of the land. He, uh, it, would, it would really give me a lift if he was buried in Kilchoman. Shit, that's the... Uh, um, he was skinning the whole place. It's quite a, an amazing uh, image. And, of course, the, the Kilchoman is the, the um, cemetery in Isla. So he was wishing... Death to so Machkrian's name in Mull was pretty black. When he died, the the the, the black bailiff or the big bailiff in 1872, uh, it was reported in the Open Times 
And here you can see in English, I get a break, thank goodness. He managed with rare tact and ability and much discretion the extensive possessions of his grace in Mull, giving entire satisfaction alike to his noble constituent and the many tenants on his estate. The poor will miss him much. To them he was kind and considerate, supplying them not only with necessaries, but in, needing, in needy and deserving cases, providing them with seed for their ground and pointing out to them both by example and precept how a good return could be found. They may regret his removal, as it may be long <laughs> before they see his like again. You can but chuckle when you read some of these. Others laughed too. Maybe as an answer to that report, a fellow, uh, uh, Hugh Ross, who belonged to the Ross and Mull, but he, filled in, uh, he lived in Balmartin in Tyree. He did a satire on the, uh, the bailiff Ian Campbell. Um, when he died uh, in 1872. Uh, he was 70 when he died. The, uh, I don't know if there was any more satires when a, uh, when a bailiff died, uh, but plenty were made when they were living. The, the big bailiff put Hugh Ross out of his croft, so... Um, you can understand why he wrote the song. So, but you can understand that uh, Hugh was not terribly sad when he heard the guy died. Um, so they, they had some drinks um, to celebrate. They, they, uh, did, uh, they, they showed... This fellow in a very bad light. There's a story in the uh, town, in the place, and we're happy to tell that the uh, bailiff's laid out, um, and he's not able to talk, to write, or to read. And when we go to the boat, we'll laugh and we'll have get together and we'll have a few drams. Good Highland water and nice wine and we will never be under this guy's uh, power again. Talks about all that he did to the ladies and the kids, um, the awful things that he did against the, the people. And even in Canada, uh, when they heard it, that this beast was asleep, fires were lit, people were delighted. They went on their knees in thankfulness. And they, for, for your death. <laughs> this is what Eric Richard would call... It's an Eric Richard's contested biography. T uh, contested uh, obituary. Not about Eric Richard's escrivaging of you with my Patrick Seller. Bring me more and more. When he did the book about Patrick Seller, I talked to him a lot. I hope I think I helped him out to to publish that book. Uh, it's a great look at Seller, and amongst the things. That were worth were uh, were valuable. The, the opinions of Eric Richards about what the things that happened. Um, that was the 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 the, the, the papers praised the guy was. Uh, just unbelievable. How could somebody like this? You know, we knew him as a complete scoundrel, and then you see pages like this. Uh, you see the obituary accounts about the lives that are so glowing. There were other stories about the bailiff Ian Campbell. I think this is as good an example as we have in Gaelic. When you look at the Open Times, 
and the song. And when you look at contested obituaries, there are other ones, but there are none as good as this. They said that he bad, died of worms that were eating his bodies. And we know that the, the, the story isn't true. Uh, it was a weak heart that killed the guy. There's a, a few others told by factors in the Highlands. Uh, um, and there's one about the, uh, the, the death of the King Herod in the New Testament. And the, the, the same kind of... Um, dreadful death. There was, there was kind of jokes about things as well, the, like the how big the coffin was and things like that. He was a big fellow, and his coffin was heavy. Somebody said who was taking the the coffin to the boat. He was heavy on us when he was alive, and he's heavy on us now. And somebody else, uh, when they were trying to put a canvas cover on the on the coffin, and it was such a wet day, and the water on the coffin, he, he, he can take plenty of water, he's hot enough where he is. There's another question, though. Was the... Was the bailiff ever white, as well as being black? There are views that were kind. This may have been amongst the family of the bailiff themselves. They come from the same kind of circle of knowledge of the, of the same person. Uh, And perhaps those two views are, can be true. His own family loves him. And it can be said that these views can be true or false because neither is complete. And I think that's true of the, of the factors. Perhaps if we could to put the two views together, perhaps we could get to a measure of truth. There was good and bad in Ian Du Kainbal. In spite of everything, you'll see something of that warmth um, in the Oranicha, where his wife Flori um, praises him. This is, this is when he was in a trip from Ty Mull to Tyree and it was pretty stormy and they were afraid he wouldn't reach. She did a song praising him and hoping that he would return safely. Utterly opposite to the other view. You're strong as a bailiff. Uh, getting praise from Argyll. Where, where is one who would fill your shoes with your sense and your uh, impartiality? You can see the uh, up on the screen. I can't read it from here, so, but that's a flavour of it. Very full of praise. This is the last song coming up. This is one that Ian McDougall uh, produced ab about Ian Campbell, praising him. It was apparently the bailiff took, gave five pounds to the poet to make the song. Bit of PR going. Um, this was, he was stayed in Ardgoer. Apparently, he, he, he was a very generous fellow, according to MacDougall. And the Camp, Campbell was a great guy. 
and that he was merciful to people during the potato famine by giving them uh, a, by giving them meal. Believe it or not, uh, this is this is how the song appeared. I'm going to try and read it from here. It was done in 1868. It was published in Glasgow. Um, well, I'll try and read a bit of it, translate a bit of it. I can. Here's a few lines. When the potato failed and we didn't have seed, you gave food to everyone who needed it. Blessings upon you since you came to Isla. And as you came, thousands um, were lacking food with your team who are great and resourceful with your boat. You got us a meal from Ireland and brought it to us swiftly. Kind of um, giving a picture like a, a one of the old clan chiefs um, hunting on the moors and helping. But that's not the... Uh, Tyree view at all. That's how it was. That's a wee taste of what there is. Nights, it's uh, nearly quarter to nine. I could carry on for a week, as I said. Day and night until you all collapsed. The uh, our heritage is so rich. But we must come to a few conclusions. What are the conclusions? The, the songs and the stories about the uh, factors are part of a very wide um, heritage that's be, to be had throughout the Highlands. It raises questions about the evidence that they give us and the difference between truth and falsehood. They're not detailed history, but are a way of to put strong feelings uh, to express strong feelings um, and to give some sense of victory over um, heavy-handed people. Uh, they are perhaps uh, real lies or lies that are true in a sense. Uh, as we talked about fact or fiction, there is fact in them, but there is fiction too. They are true and uh, false at the same time. They give us a, sh a view of how people felt about these people at the time. They wish death on a lot of these people. But we know that no factor was ever killed by a crofter. Probably was close at times, but it didn't happen. But many were killed in the stories and in the songs. There was great rejoicing when they were done away. Uh, I think it brought some comfort to people to, to think um, that this power of the imagination over these people in a comic or cartoon uh, scenario uh, gave them some kind of relief. I was saw uh, with the Black Bailiff, um, they were completely different from the views of the family themselves. In the eyes of the family, and occasionally, the eyes of the poets that uh, belong to that kind of family circle, I suppose, they were without uh, reproach. Five quid, might write, might write one. Uh, but was that true? Fact or fiction? Fact or fiction? Uh, was, it, was the uh, obituary in the open times, was it fact or fiction? The last picture then? There, a picture of strife between good, good and evil. The, the uh, images represent evil, but they admit sometimes that there is good. Some people, sometimes people didn't see the good at all and they weren't willing to see the good in people. As uh, Sorry McLean himself 
laid out that people they didn't understand uh, even those who were trying to, to 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 do things that were beneficial but uh, these songs gave them some kind of uh, closure they, these, these stories gave a, a voice to the people themselves and that's different from what happened with the, with the, uh, with the factors where they had no voice they, the songs and po um, stories gave some encouragement to them that the, uh, the people were stronger than the landlord that's the kind of world we need uh, where good can conquer bad. The stories and the songs were part of this, uh, the social media of the day. This is what happened. Uh, these songs were carried around on the wing, like Twitter, uh, but it lifted their hearts. Um, but it raised very strong feelings uh, with which not everyone agreed. And this, this was fascinating and showed the strength of the, uh, the people. That was just a little. I hope you enjoyed this little taste. And I hope that this was worthy of the name and the reputation and the scholarship of Sorley McLean. Thank you very much. Many thanks for such a lovely uh, uh, address of such depth and such uh, lightness at times too. Um, we have time for a few questions if, uh, if anybody has anything um, they'd like to discuss. You can ask in Gaelic or English. Um, we, do, we are bilingual here. Any questions? A question has been raised online. I'm not sure if I'll be able to hear it, but uh, if it's in Gaelic, I'll translate. The debate's still going, so I'm happy to answer questions. Shannon McMullen and Kit Breton asked. Jos Neil Vick, Joe McNeil. He, that he had a story that was similar. And then, oh, Shilig Nalicha, it's a different word, but it's still porridge. And that, it's recorded on Strunagel. If anybody wants to see that, this is uh, um, Joe McNeil, um, famed um, st a storyteller and tradition bearer in Cape Breton. Who, uh, who, and he had the reigning um, porridge story. The they were very interested in the the old ladies who were dancing when Seller died. Or when when the, the, the sorry the Seller's uh, song. So the mic's going round. I'm not hearing very well, but I'll do my best to translate questions that come. It's a silly question. Minister and the bailiff. The minister and the bailiff. Uh, between the minister and the bailiff, who was the worst? Sometimes the minister and the bailiff and it would work together, but not always. And Tidy, the bailiff and the factor would uh, fall out. They were powerful people. And we haven't really researched properly about their power within the community, the minister and the bailiff. Sometimes the bailiff would order the minister, but also sometimes vice versa. I'm just 
um, finishing a, a biography. Um, MacLaurin in Tyree. And there's a story there about, or a song about the minister and the bailiff. Um, that's the first thing I've seen about the dynamic between minister uh, uh, and the bailiff. The minister would have, would be a, ta uh, would be a, a landholder, and he had power. And so they were both powerful people, and if they weren't singing from the same, same hymn sheet, they, they would be at each other's throats. Who's worse? Good question. Thank you, Donald. It was wonderful to listen to the stories. You were talking about the motifs that, that continue through a lot of these. You showed us the, the um, satire on Patrick Seller. Seller. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I can't hear terribly well this question. I just have There's a lot of research to be done about the wells of knowledge from which these uh, poets drew. Where did they get these motifs? Somewhere Highland. Um, Songs from the 16th century, some of them are international. Um, in terms of the, 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 the porridge story, you'll get that in other situations, not just about factors, but different, different situations. Are there other ones we should uh, think about too? You'll see more of them, I'm sure. Nothing brings to mind, but... But sometimes people maybe felt guilty about saying bad things all the time. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there was a contravention in, in Christianity as well from, from speaking down about people. It's interesting to consider how that happened. What, what were the uh, contraventions of speaking the truth uh, from the church and from just uh, politesse as well? Sorry, sorry said that uh, people would um, doff their caps to the factor. There was still uh, a great deal of um, manners and uh, there's a lot to be done in terms of these subjects. Um, Sorley wrote a lot about that kind of thing in the transactions. There's a great deal of research to be done. Thank you, Meg. I'm not sure if there's a silly question. I've been thinking about this for a long time. We hear about factors who are very famous, like Seller. Is there a pattern between how? Uh, I mean, how, the, how the landlords hired these guys. 
did they how how did they get hold of these guys? How, how, did, how did they go about hiring these guys? There was a pattern. I'm working on one, this, this fellow, McLaren, who was in Tyree. I'm going to do a chapter in the book. Malcolm McLaren. Uh, Macla and legend. Malcolm McLaurin and memory and legend. I'm going to try and make a picture of the. Make a picture of him. In terms of how he's seen in, in the estates. There are templates that they use. There's a template that goes on. Um, over what, the, what the, the, the bailiff that was working on the estate. The pattern is... The pattern in, uh, of, the, of the folklore for seller. The, that pattern in that song. It's similar to the pattern from Ian Tu Campbell. There are questions that arise on the other side. Was the factor as bad as people said? Was there any? Were these guys totally awful? The questions are still being asked. I'm trying to try, I'm trying to answer this question for McLaurin in, in Tyree. He was a doctor before he became a factor, and so he, he would serve people as a doctor in Tyree. At the same time, he was in control of the island. So there's obviously different, different sides of these templates. That's, I'm not sure if that answers the question. Uh, I, I think that's another question for, for research in any <laughs> PhD, if anybody really fancies it. Uh, looking at, looking at um, different factors in their estates. There's ways of accessing this. Uh, so uh, a lot of these um, archives need help from, from, from people um, to save these things. And so they're, we're being invited to look at some of these archives now. So there's an opportunity to do that, that, that maybe wasn't there 20 years ago. Have a look at the bailiffs in, uh, in the north of Sutherland or in Kintyre or these places. There's a lot of interesting work to be done. There's another story on the big factor. Yanyo um, Gila did a, did a, this is um, uh, John Lauren Campbell, uh, not John Lauren Campbell, um, uh, Frank. A Campbell of Isla who did the popular tales. I, it, it shows that maybe that the 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 the, the, um, the big shots didn't really understand a lot of the the the, the feelings about the factors. The the uh, the landlords. Interesting. It was interesting to see how um, the, the kind of the, fa the politics of, of some of these songs as well. Uh, the the Sinclair, Glaspic Sinclair, Archibald Sinclair. He was he was very much for the common people, the publisher in Glasgow. 
The, that there's a split personality with some of these as well, including that publisher, Alex uh, Gillespie, um, Alex, Archibald Sinclair. Interesting. This little poem and a tiny little printing. This was a print. This was a debate that was going at the time. So, so the the black bailiff got round uh, uh, Archibald Sinclair uh, to to get this printed. He was on both sides of the story, at the, uh, both sides of the uh, fence at the same time. We had various words with shika. Um, a shikler would be a, a small, a, t a, 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 a tall person, but it could be a heckler as well. Donald Kalamban and Tyree said that the word was something that scraped a skinner that uh, takes everything to himself, that the, the black bailiff was doing that to everybody, taking for himself. In that song in Mull, that same song was in Tyree. About the, about the black bailiff in Tyree. I haven't really researched that properly yet. Uh, how a, a, a song can be made for two people who are connected, depending on whether you're in Mull or in, in uh, uh, Ty Tyree. What about a template that can be shifted from one person to another? Sorry, I'm not hearing. Terrible. Last thing, the Irish. You looked, have you looked at uh, the, the Irish? There are people working on this. Have you heard of Paul Ward, um, professor in Cambridge? Lovely fellow. And he is very interested in the uh, factors, the bailiffs in Ireland, um, and what was happening in Northern Ireland. He was with me in Tyree uh, last year. But we had an, a fantastic week considering and uh, discussing these uh, bailiffs in, in Ireland. Paul is on that uh, from the Irish side. and. He's hoping, working with us. He's uh, with us. So he, Paul Ward is part of the team, looking, helping us as well. We're just, we're just starting. Thank you for a lovely address. I, I cannot hear this speaker, I'm afraid. Sorry, folks, I can't, couldn't hear any of that, I'm afraid. As Ian McCaskill talked about people that, uh, in Assent. There's a fellow chambers working on, on the Lewis Park estate. Sorry, I... This doesn't really work without the question. Uh, 
ale spiewają w chrycin kroł, było jakieś enora. Filię sześciu. Han mury na chrynawają te skrywy, jak mają. Kto są rzeczy na szechkę, ten nurewa myśl na chrywach, żeby we skrywy, gdy na krus perenczym swa. Szejmy smakę ciała, kerwyszyn, i szejle kolory i jan machtyle, a jan marszko, no pań. Am... Han mury na chrób, było jakieś enora. Ma lehat tanhorsin dziw. Wiga ma pe, es mendzie ha kroł. O, kacarek. A sa szene, sa ka ta kis dzielisien. Ura ma na ma dzielik bychien nas muanczyn e czyn. A gys ha szene eter... Ender nda ha hywr. Sa ka ta... Chyba chyra gajal chorwat nas chorwat tona. Chorwat ha uma wysach li pali e nela. As li uach kara nela. In Argyll, they weren't as bad as, quite as bad as others. Um, but, so in Tyree, we, we weren't so keen on owning the land. So, yeah. The places where I see, places where land has been bought out, maybe shows where the effect of the factors was, was the, the worst. I think that's the the drive of the question. It just shows you how important it is to, to, to pen our history, to, to figure out um, the effects of certain things, the, um, the way they influence um, the modern day. Any other questions? I'd like to thank everyone who have helped us to organise this night. Sorry, McLean Trust. Sorry, his family. Every, everybody who's worked behind the scenes and me here. Sorry, I missed some of that stuff. <laughs> Technology is tricky sometimes. Uh, but our most important thanks to. Donald for such a, an interesting um, and fascinating address. There'll be a few drinks waiting outside. Thank you very much, everyone.